Do you run a small business? If so, does it feel like you have to do everything yourself and you actually don't want to do most of what you're doing? Well, five years ago, I was in exactly the same position before I started using standard operating procedures. I now spend most of my time working on my real estate business rather than in it. In this video, I wanna show you behind the scenes so you can get away from the self-employment trap, free up your time so that you can work on those highest value tasks. This week I'm going to show you how to create new SOPs, use them in your business and manage them over time, all using my favourite tool Notion. So let's go. Hi and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Andy, a real estate investor based in Maidenhead. This channel is here to help you systemize your real estate businesses using tools like Notion and Asana. So what are SOPs? Standard operating procedures are step-by-step -step instructions that help workers to carry out their routine operations in your business. It could be instructions on how to uh, deal with a website inquiry, it could be how to reconcile your bank account, maybe it could be how to arrange or set up a networking event. And SOPs can take different forms, so it could be a checklist for property viewings, it could be a set of instructions for finding property leads on the internet, or maybe a flowchart for onboarding a new tenant. So why would we use SOPs? Firstly, as I mentioned earlier, they allow you to outsource routine work to others so that you can focus on the more important business growth activities. Secondly, you also build up resilience in your business because if someone's ill or leaves or needs to prioritize other tasks, you can direct someone else to the same set of instructions and they can do the task in instead. Also, SOPs increase efficiency, since every time one of your team comes to do the task, they don't have to work out or remember how to do it. They can just follow the steps that have been written down by you or somebody else. Also, creating a standard way of doing things means that you get uniformity of performance across different team members, because they're all doing the same thing. There's no interpretation or them trying to do it differently. And also it, uh, SOPs enable you to delegate quicker, so you don't have to spend time teaching people, sitting on calls, just direct them to the instructions and then they can follow them as they need to in their own time. So why use Notion for uh, SOPs? Well, Notion is a really flexible, powerful, all-in-one workspace. It has a block structure that enables you to put lots of different types of media together. So for our SOPs, it can be flowcharts from Whimsical, videos from YouTube, texts, um, lists, numbered lists, a whole host of different types of information can be easily brought together and then stored in a database which you can then filter. Different SOPs can be assigned to different people which we're going to go over in the next few minutes. So Notion is fantastic for this sort of uh, use case. And I would say that this video is part of a series that I've created on YouTube uh, about how to use Notion in your real estate business. So do check out the playlist above for more helpful videos on uh, Notion in real estate. First up, let's look at how to add a new SOP in Notion. And in this video, I'm gonna to refer to my real estate business, but of course this can be used in a whole host of different uh, industries and businesses. So this is just an example. So I'm currently here in uh, Notion and I've got my sourcing SOPs dashboard. Um, we can see here that we've got add a new SOP. So I'm just gonna click into this one and we can see that I've got a table here or a database and it's ready to go um, for adding a new lead. So there's a couple of ways that I can do this. So either click down the bottom for new or on the right hand side. I'm just going to click the new button and here uh, it's got it's using a template so um, I'll go through that in a minute but firstly let's just select which um, department so who's going to do let's say this new SOP is um, how to um, stack a property um, deal so this is going to be done by our sourcing manager so they're going to have a look at the leads and go and work out whether they're going to stack or not. And then we've got here a roll up field, which has then chosen the department, which is sourcing and the person, which is Rome. Um, the template has automatically said that this is going to be the backlog. Um, so this is the basic status of the SOP. And because it's a new one, we haven't started writing it yet. So it's just in the backlog. So how often are we going to stack these deals? So I'm going to say that we'll do this uh, weekly. Um, what keywords? So let's say that this is part of due diligence and this is deal analysis. So I could just add a new keyword. So if I just click on create, um, and then how, what tool are we going to use to do this? So let's say that we're gonna use a spreadsheet. So it's not here listed. So let's just type that in, spreadsheet, and then create. 
this field, the next review date, is when are we next going to go over this um, SOP to make sure that it's uh, still up to date and correct. Um, so I typically do this uh, every three months. So if this is created today on the 24th of Jan, let's just jump forwards uh, to, oh, know, let's go to the 18th of uh, April. So that's our next review date. I've also got four properties here that are hidden. Now these are automatically uh, filled out. These are the last uh, the uh, last edited time and person, and then what was it created time and person. But we don't need to do anything with those, so I can just hide them. Underneath, uh, we've actually created a template here, which has populated the notes section in the database record. Um, and there's loads in here. So firstly, we've got the sub title. So I'm just gonna write that and put that in again. So let's just copy and paste. Um, the SOP title, how to stack a property deal, the department is sourcing. Um, now we could put in a video, so if we recorded a video um, of how to do this, we could just go and uh, add it in here. Um, so we'll add in the purpose, so this is... Great, any documentation, terminology, and so what tools are we going to use? So this is Excel, perhaps, which is the spreadsheet. Um, roles and responsibilities, so this is the sourcing manager. So first I'm going to put where we want this process to start and end. So the start is going to be a blank deal analysis um, spreadsheet um, and we've got a template and then the end of this process is going to be a um, completed deal analysis uh, spreadsheet with figures entered and decision made whether to proceed. Great, so here we would just add the steps. So I'm not gonna type all of these in, but we would um, uh, duplicate um, the uh, spreadsheet. And then step two, maybe to uh, enter the current known numbers, etc., etc. And I put these into little toggles because you ca could actually add some screenshots uh, into here as well, just to make it a lot more obvious. Uh, any inputs, so do we need to know any information to be able to run this SOP and where would we get that information from and then how do we know when it's done. So this is decision made about whether to proceed to um, offer on a property. Great, so that's how we can uh, add a new SOP and then we just click out and we are sorted. Once you've started to create a bank of SOPs, you can then start to use that information in different areas of Notion. So let me give you an example. I'm currently here on the sourcing dashboard and here we've got a section on how to source properties. So this is an SOPs where they're broken down into different uh, tasks. This is more just an informational area like a wiki. So if I just click into here, we've got a few different sections. So for example, we could just have a list of all of the relevant SOPs. Uh, so here I've just got each of the different sourcing SOPs, who's responsible and the person. And this is quite a useful way just to see them in a long list in a different area um, of Notion. And that's using a, a view, a linked view. But also here we could start to copy links. So let me give you an example. Here we've got how to um, send landlord letters. So let's just imagine that this was landlord letters. I can just click on these six dots and copy the link and then highlight this text and just with my keyboard go Apple V um, and just paste that over the top. So now that link is attached to that text. So if I just click on this, it will straight away take me to that SOP. Um, so you could actually write this as uh, in, in a sentence. So if you want to get in contact with a property owner directly, the best way is to send landlord letters. And then in your text, just paste the link to the actual SOP um, and you'll straight away know how to do it. So that's um, a really useful, another part of um, Notion that's really powerful is that linking and connecting things um, together. So that's how you can use your SOPs in different areas. So you've created your SOPs and you've gone and started using them throughout your Notion setup and you've started to get a bit more of your time back. So the last thing that we need to do is just stay on top of these processes uh, because things change. Um, there are uh, tools that may change their functionality or put things in a different place. 
and you want to make sure that your instructions are still up to date. So let's have a look at SOP management. So I'm again here on my uh, sourcing SOPs dashboard and down the bottom we've got SOP management. So let's just click into this one. And this uses the date functionality within the database. So if I just quickly go and open up this SOP, as I mentioned earlier, we've got a next review date field. So let's say that we'd written this um, a few months ago and we'd set a date that in January we want to go and review this SOP just to double check and make sure that it all works again. So within this SOP management area, I've actually got a filter field which says firstly the department is sourcing and then secondly the next review date is uh, today, so it's on or before today. So there may be other SOPs in the future that will need to be checked, but in terms of this filter, uh, the review date search is for on or before today. And that's why it's brought up the how to review the area you real, uh, yield information. So all we would do is whoever's responsible, so let's say it's myself, uh, we just go and open this SOP, we could just check the details, maybe run through the instructions, see if anything has changed or needed to be updated. And then once we're done, we can change this date perhaps to another three months uh, in the future. So let's just say the 24th of April, um, click off it and it's disappeared from our list. So again, Notion dates um, are really useful for um, searching and filtering things that are relevant just for now rather than seeing everything. And that's how we can use SOPs in our real estate business. As I mentioned earlier, this is part of a real estate notion playlist, so check it out above. And do let me know in the comments how else you'll use uh, SOPs in your business. There'll be more videos like this coming over the next weeks and months, so do make sure that you subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell. It really does help me and the channel. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.